Hello YouTube, today I have for you the EA Sheen 1S LiPo LIHV 6-in-1 charger. And it comes in a little box like this in an anti-static bag, and I'm going to set that aside. So here we go with what we got here. What you have is six channels, and each channel is boxed off and numbered. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. On each channel you have a JST 2.0 plug which are the pretty common on the micro quads and you also have a pico blade 1.25 as well but you can only charge one battery per channel you cannot plug in both of these at the same time you can do one here one here one here and so on you cannot do two per channel so you can only charge six you can charge say one in here and then one down here on this one but you can't charge here and here. You have to do, just pick one. Now, on each channel, you also have a selection switch here, and the lower position is for your LiPos at 4.2 volt. In the upper position, you have 4.35 volt for your LIHVs. And up here, you have, on each channel, a selection switch for your charge rate. There's 200 milliamp and 600 milliamp. And I don't think you guys are going to see this because these are really small letters and my camera doesn't want to focus. But... Uh, these things work out really nice. Now you got to do note one thing: polarity does matter on this. On the 2.0s, the one on the right, when you're facing this way, the one on the right is your positive. The left one is your negative. On the Pico blades, the top one, top pin, is your positive, and the lower pin is your negative. Uh, you also have a readout here, which will cycle through all your voltages. And it says it takes between a 7 to 25 volt input. And over here you have a USB 5 volt out. Uh, this USB is for like say, charging your cell phone or whatever. Um, you have an XT60 connector that you can put in either from a 2S to a 6S battery to charge the little micro batteries. But I honestly, I would probably not go with anything more than a 4S just to be on the safe side. I've done it with 3S batteries and it works out just fine. Um, right here you have a barrel connector. It is a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 inner. And you can use the this one here is like 10 to 12 millimeters long, fits right in there without sticking out. So there's the gist of what it looks like. So let's plug this in. And as you can see, it's already starting to cycle through your voltages and that voltage right there per channel, channel 2, 4.19, channel 3, 4.18, that's what it's sitting at right now. So if I put the meter across it, that's what, basically what it would show, give or take a few percent there. Um, you're not going to get perfection out of something like this. These things are under uh, like around 15 bucks, sometimes under, and I would not expect perfection on the readouts uh, at that price. So just keep that in mind. Now, as you can see, all these lights are kind of flickering, but when we plug in a battery, the light goes on solid on that channel. Now, that light will stay solid until it gets up to the full charge. Now, I don't know for certain if this cuts off the voltage or the current going to the battery at that point when it finishes charging and the light goes out, but I wouldn't trust it. You shouldn't leave your LiPos unattended anyway when you're charging, so I would just pull it as soon as it's done. Um, but right now, let's get a cycle back around here. I'll show you this as it goes. Input voltage, 12.3. USB output, 5.05. Channel 1 is 4.03 at the moment. So when that reaches the 4.2 or right around there, it will the light will go out and it should stop charging. Then you would pull it. But uh, I have checked all these at the 200 milliamp setting and at the 600 milliamp setting. And... The milliamps are just a little off, but I've noticed when I put in a battery that is completely uh, that's run down to say you know 3.7 volts, it will show up very close to 200 milliamps at the 200 milliamp setting and very close to 600 at the 600 milliamp setting. But as the battery charges, that milliamps just kind of drops off a little bit, and the closer it gets to full charge, the more it drops. And I think that's kind of good because it just slows down just a little bit. It doesn't drop very much. I mean, it's like around 160 for the 200 and about 500 for the 600 milliamp setting. But uh, 
right now what I got going in here to power this is just a wall wart and it is a 12 volt 3 amp. Now being that these are all set at 200 milliamp that's safe because when you look at your milliamps you got to add up every channel. You got 200 per channel is what they're set at so that's 200 times 6 that's 1200 milliamps and you always want to you know 40 percent or 50 percent safety margin on what you're actually powering it with and this is a 12 volt 3 amp so that's plenty they recommend at least a 2 amp for the two uh 200 milliamp charge but you wouldn't be able to do the 600 milliamp on a 2 amp chart uh 2 amp power supply you'd only be able to put two batteries in at 600 milliamp and be safe you wouldn't be able to put any more in there at all. If you want to charge at 600 milliamp on all six, that's 3,600 milliamps. So you would need a safety margin of 40 to 50%. I would recommend at least a five amp power supply, even maybe a six amp just to be on the safe side. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, mention about power supplies, always make sure you get the UL certified because they have gone through testing to make sure they're putting out what they say. They don't overheat. As easily and they certainly won't catch on fire as easily as the other ones that you see around on the market if they don't have that UL certification I would not even bother with them a lot of companies will put all kinds of fancy symbols on them on them to make them look good but when you get them and you plug them in you notice they get really hot and even though you're not pulling that much current out of them and that's typical of the cheaper power supplies but as for this I would honestly say yeah, it's a good buy at the price. And if you do a lot of micro um, flying and you have the Pico Blade 125s or the 2.0 uh, JSTs, really nice little charger. I do, uh, I fly some uh, Fury Bees in the house a lot and I do charge up quite a bit of batteries. And I tell you what, I bought two of these things and I'm able to charge 12 batteries at once. I could sit there on a stormy day and just fly all day in my house, just swapping back and forth between uh, like four of those Fury Bees, not even having to worry about waiting for everything to cool down. I can just swap to the next one and keep going and just keep charging batteries all day long if I wanted to. Uh, so yeah, I like these. They're not absolute perfection, but what do you expect for under 15 bucks? Uh, they do to the job. They do definitely charge up your batteries and this thing has been working out quite well. I have put these things through their paces and they have worked out very well for me. I haven't had anything breaking on them yet. None of the channels have quit working. It's all working just fine. And I have, like I said, charged with three S LiPos and with the wall warts here, and it works out really well. I have actually charged, uh, a friend of mine's, we were out of, out of the field flying uh, some quads and he actually charged a cell phone off of here. It worked out really well. So that does work as well. I did have it plugged in for a while on the uh, LiPo, and it did charge his cell phone. I charged uh, his cell phone a second time on another day with this, and I had an inverter in the car, and it worked out really well. So, yeah, I really do recommend these. If you do want to charge a lot of batteries, six-in-one chargers, pick up a couple of them. You'll be set for a while. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.